Did you know that vegetable oil is not made from vegetables? Yeah, so there's no broccoli in this entire container. So what is in here? And what's a boy to do to find healthy cooking oil? Well, we're gonna get into all that. So hang on to your horses, let's get to it. Hey everybody, my name is Dennis, and over the past 10 years, I've spent thousands of hours researching nutrition and applying it to my from scratch cooking. Today, we're gonna talk about vegetable oil, Crisco or shortening, olive oil, lard, coconut oil, and avocado oil. We're gonna see which ones are Dennis approved and which ones should be removed. And there are timestamps in the video description if you're lame and you only wanna hear about like one of the oils. First up is vegetable oil. Now this can also be known as soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, Oil, sunflower or safflower oil. There are a few others, but those are the major ones. And right off the bat, there are no vegetables in here. Vegetable oil is not made from vegetables. All of those things I just mentioned are their grains, their beans, their legumes, their uh, a canola is technically a fruit, but that's the closest one that gets to a vegetable. This is a lie. The first thing that vegetable oil brands are doing to you is lying. There's no vegetables. They just say vegetable because it sounds healthy. If they said it's canola oil, you'd be like, what's canola? I don't know. But if it says vegetable oil, you're like, oh, vegetables. I remember my second grade health class. They said vegetables were healthy and vegetables are healthy. This is not vegetables. This is just the generic vegetable oil that I got at Hy-Vee. But if you turn it around and look at the ingredients, there's one ingredient and it's not vegetable oil, it's soybean oil. Yeah, like I said, a lie. This is highly expelled, rancid, unstable fats. Vegetable oil is highly refined so that it doesn't have a flavor, right? But it also doesn't have any micronutrients. There's no vitamins, there's no minerals, it's just empty fat. And if you hear any weird noises, it's my baby in the background. Yeah, I'm a dad. I gotta do the dad stuff as well as record the videos. The other great thing about vegetable oil is that all of the components that make up vegetable oil are industrially produced, which means that we're getting lots of pesticide and herbicide residue in our oil. Yum, it's my favorite. It gives it like a little tang. Sarcasm. So in summary, these are empty fats that are adding to your daily caloric content without adding any micronutrients and in fact, depleting your micronutrient stores, your vitamin and mineral stores. So vegetable oil should be removed. Next up, we got Crisco or all vegetable shortening. And like on the last one, it's a marketing tool. Vegetable is a lie. The ingredients in here are, first off, soybean oil. Oh, that sounds familiar. Second off, fully hydrogenated palm oil. Oh, hydrogenated oil is my favorite. We'll go into that in a second. Next, we got palm oil, mono and diglycerides, TBHQ, and citric acid. Those are antioxidants, which that makes them better if you give a little description for why you're using them, right? No, they're still chemicals. This is a lab formulated oil very bad for you, and we're gonna go into why. Studies indicate that fully hydrogenated oils are likely highly carcinogenic, meaning they are potentially a major cause for cancer. Now, you've likely heard of hydrogenated oils, but they were probably referred to as trans fats, and we're told trans fats are really bad. Well, yes, they are really bad. In fact, in 2015, the FDA banned partially hydrogenated oils, which are the ones that contain trans fats, because they were causing people heart disease and heart attacks. It took the FDA like 70 years to finally ban partially hydrogenated oils because it was causing heart attacks, and yet they left fully hydrogenated oils on the market as a viable yeah. option for companies to sell. That's crazy. Personally, I'm not willing to wait another 70 years and risk my health for the US government to finally realize that this laboratory created concoction is also bad for you. Because when it comes down to it, partially hydrogenated oils and fully hydrogenated oils are the same thing. They are both when you artificially, chemically alter the molecular structure of the oil. Personally, that sounds maybe like pretty bad. So Crisco should be removed. Luckily, butter is a perfect substitute for Crisco like 99% of the time. And if you wanna know about butter, I've got a video on that. But for that 1% of the time when you do need some shortening, find a shortening that is made from palm oil that is not hydrogenated. Or maybe try using lard. We'll get to that in a second. Next up, we have olive oil. Real olive oil properly prepared is good for you. But it is not a particularly stable oil, which means that you need to find one that is organic, cold pressed and extra virgin or just virgin. Ideally, we're gonna be storing it in tinted glass so that there's not a lot of light heating the oil and 
there's not chemicals leaching into the oil because we're using glass. Organic means that they're growing it without the use of chemicals. Extra virgin means that they're not refining it a lot, so it still has all its natural minerals and all of its natural vitamins. And cold pressed means that they're using traditional methods and not excessive heat to expel the oil from the olives. If you use too much heat on olive oil, then it becomes rancid. Olive oil is best used for making salad dressings, mayonnaise, maybe using like a little dip for bread, and not things that are gonna take a lot of heat. Direct cooking with olive oil, while in moderation, is okay. If you do it all the time, then it's not gonna be very good for you. You're gonna be getting rancid oil in your diet. Mostly, you want to be eating your olive oil uncooked. All these things put together means that good quality olive oil is probably gonna be pretty pricey. You can find cheap olive oil, but oftentimes it's actually cut with vegetable oil. I recently had someone ask me about PUFA in their olive oil. P-U-F-A was one of the ingredients. It turns out PUFA stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids. That means vegetable oil. It's a little term that they use to try and hide the fact that they're just mixing soybean oil or corn oil into your olive oil. Because corn oil, super cheap. Olive oil, expensive. So if you can just do like 51% olive oil and 49% corn oil, it's super cheap for the manufacturer to produce and yet they can still call it olive oil because it's mostly olive oil. So check your ingredients. This one says 100% certified organic extra virgin olive oil. Wonderful. If you can afford it, olive oil is Dennis approved. If you can't, you're probably better off just buying some cheap butter than you are buying cheap olive oil. Next up, we have lard or bacon fat. Lard is the natural fat that's derived from pigs. And bacon fat is simply the lard that cooks out of bacon because bacon is pig. Lard is one of the best sources in nature for vitamin D. The vitamin D is fully bioavailable, meaning you can absorb it when you eat it. It'll give a really good boost to your immune system in the wintertime when you're not getting as much sun. Lard is very heat stable. The smoking point is over 350 degrees Fahrenheit and it has a very mild flavor, making it perfect for deep frying, pastries, and just general cooking. It has about the same consistency as butter, so when it's in the fridge, it's hard. When it's in your hand, it melts. I always keep a pound or two of lard in a large pot on my stove. That way, it's super accessible for me to just grab a quick spot while I'm cooking, and I can very easily use it for deep frying french fries or other fried food without going through all the trouble of preparing a pot of oil every time or cleaning it afterwards. I usually change the lard every couple weeks after I've used it for deep frying about six or seven times. Pigs have a lot of fat, which makes lard very cheap, but it isn't super accessible in a lot of grocery stores. So if you're looking for lard, maybe try talking to your local butcher. That's where we get ours. You can also check ethnic stores like Chinese or Mexican markets because lard is a traditional cooking oil for those cultures. Or talk to the farmer where you get your grass-fed antibiotic-free meats. If they don't sell lard, they know someone who does. So lard is Dennis approved. Next up, we have coconut oil. It's hard to go wrong with coconut oil. I always buy organic just so that I'm making sure to remove as much pesticides from my life as possible. But because of the thick rinds of a coconut, pesticide residue isn't usually gonna be a huge problem. It also has a very high smoke point, meaning you can cook with it at high temperatures, and you can also refine it to remove the coconut flavor so that you have a more bland or plain tasting oil. That can be good for certain applications if you wanna use coconut oil, but you don't want the coconut flavor. I like the coconut flavor, so I get the virgin or the extra virgin coconut oil but even refined coconut oil is pretty good for you still. Coconut oil over the past few years and decade has gotten a huge boost in popularity, which is really good to hear because among other health benefits, coconut oil has been shown to reduce and prevent Alzheimer's and other mental problems and just improve brain function overall, which makes sense because coconut oil is very high in saturated fat, which is necessary for brain function. So coconut oil is Dennis approved. And last but not least, our final contestant is avocado oil. Avocado oil is highly stable like coconut oil, which makes it a great cooking oil. And if you buy refined, it's still gonna be good for you. But again, I usually buy the extra virgin or virgin avocado oil because it has a natural flavor to it. I love getting flavorful oils and using different oils for different dishes. So if I'm making a stir fry, I might use a coconut oil in order to get a coconut flavor into my dish or an avocado flavor into my mayonnaise because I think it tastes good. But there's also gonna be a higher nutrition profile in the unrefined oils. The refined oils are not gonna be necessarily bad for you, but they're not gonna be quite as good for you. Unrefined avocado oil has a hint of green color. 
and a very mild avocado taste. Once you refine it, there's pretty much no color or taste left, which makes it a perfect oil for transitioning away from unhealthy mayonnaise that you'd buy at the grocery store and making your own mayonnaise. If you have a kid who's picky and not gonna eat green mayonnaise, don't use the unrefined avocado oil. Use refined avocado oil, which has no flavor and no color. Avocado oil is kind of expensive though, so I only use it in moderation, but it is becoming widely available, mostly thanks to the brand Primal Kitchen, who has all sorts of avocado oil products, from mayonnaise, garlic mayonnaise, just this unrefined oil. You can also find refined oil and super convenient cooking spray. If you want cooking spray, don't get the regular one, get this avocado one and it's gonna be a lot better for you. So I'm really encouraged to see brands going more natural and having more traditional cooking oils. And if you haven't guessed it already, avocado oil is Dennis approved. The few studies that I referenced in this video, I'll put links in the description too. And if you got value out of this video, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing for kitchen tools, nutritious cooking and healthy living. That's about it.